Greetings once again, humans. It is I, Caretta Singer, coming to you once again with another video of me doing uh, something random. Well, it's not really random. So I've been wanting to do this for quite some time and I've been kind of procrastinating. I, um, I always wanted to do a likeness sculpt and uh, probably the closest I've ever done is this dude here on my desktop. Uh, his face is actually a, a mix of four different actors' faces. Um, Anthony Hopkins is one of them. Um, there's Rufus Sewell, Rutger Hauer, and uh, Mads Mikkelsen. You can probably tell Mads Mikkelsen's mouth kind of a little bit on here. But um, I've, I've always wanted to do uh, a likeness sculpt. As a matter of fact, the other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do a likeness sculpt and then do the same thing that I did with Arthur here, um, this kind of weird cyborgy thing. I wanted to do the same thing with you know, whoever it is I decided to sculpt. Now, um, as you can tell, I've probably uh, gone, gotten quite far ahead <laughs> with working on this. And um, I wanted to just basically talk about how I got to this point. I mean, it still quite doesn't look like Anthony Hopkins. I'm using, I'm using a, uh, this is a reference. And if you, you can probably tell from this image that I'm using that there's something kind of off, off with it which is probably why there's something off with the face as well, but um, we'll, we'll talk about that <laughs> in a bit. So hang on a second, just let's, let's talk about how I got here. Now, um, these are the reference images that I'm using. Um, this is the main one probably that I'll be using for this. Um, and that's the one that I have uh, referenced in ZBrush. Now, before I start getting into anything, there's two things that I need to point out. The first thing is when you are in ZBrush, um, if you want to sculpt something, you can sculpt on both sides at the same time. So just like it is here, you can see the cursor is on either side. And um, if I draw something on one side, it'll mirror onto the other side. So, you know, like that. And it's a very quick, easy way to like work on something. So you don't have to worry about doing the same thing twice in a row and, you know, going, oh, well, how do I get the other side to look kind of correct? So that's number one. That's how ZBrush can work, right? Um, it's a quicker way of working. It's the way a lot of people work when they're sculpting things. However, the contradiction to this is that most people's faces are not symmetrical. Most people's faces have a symmetry built to them. So like, um, you can kind of tell like, you know, he's got like a, this eye droops down a little bit more on this side and his nose kind of deviates a little bit to the right, well, our right, probably his left. Um, same thing like the Cupid's bow and this part of his nose is a little bit off center. Or it might also be that his head slightly turned, but you, there is, a uh, deviation to his nose and the thing is, is it can be I mean you're just gonna give yourself extra hell if you're gonna sit down here and like sculpt each side independent of each other so what I've done to kind of um, mitigate that is I've created uh, two reference images this is the reference image that I have loaded up in my uh, pure ref um, panel there and this is the one that I have loaded up in ZBrush now you can see it's kind of weird because like it's I've mirrored one side of his face um, and there's a reason for me doing that it's easier for me to work mirrored at first and then once I get like most of the landmarks for the face down I can then go ahead and start lining everything up on the other side of the face. That's kind of the same process that I used when I was working on the King Arthur sculpt here. Um, he does have asymmetry to his face. His, his face is turned off to the side kind of, but it's, I find it an easier way to work or that, that's how it worked for me. I don't know if that's the way that everybody else does it when they're doing likenesses, but um, that's how I worked it. I kind of made a symmetrical face first, worked on it in symmetry, and then once I got most of the landmarks down, I broke up the symmetry and then, you know, kind of dragged things around. Now, 
I'm gonna preface this by saying I'm I'm no Chris Costa. People, anybody who's talking about likenesses should know Chris Costa, aka Antropus. He's probably one of the best um, likeness sculptors on the planet. Like everybody talks about him, and if you have the money, you can actually like you know purchase some of his um, his um, tutorials or um, lessons that he he has on his site. Um, but yeah, I I don't have the four or five hundred dollars that it's going to cost for the minimum. On, on that so I'm just kind of trying to free ball this on my on my own so it may work as well as it might not work but I think this this worked for me before so I'll see if it works for me now I'm I'm deciding to record this instead of streaming it because it's harder for me to stream sometimes especially when I'm having to like think a lot um, I find it really, really difficult to focus on what I'm doing and then having to interact with people. So I figured I would just record this and then do this, you know, maybe when I'm further along and I'm doing like very fine details, I can work on uh, streaming stuff and, and that sort of thing. So yeah, this is kind of where I am. Now, um, in terms of how I got this far with the sculpt, um, Usually I bring a sphere into here and I start sculpting from that, but I wasn't really happy with how it was turning out. And one of the reasons for that is that I don't really have a very good reference for the side profile, right? Um, you can see the head's kind of wonky over here. Pay that one, no, no mind. But um, I don't really have a very good side profile for him. And the reason I don't have a good side profile is I've been digging down the entire internet trying to find a side profile that works, like a really good side-on profile. And I can't find one. And I'm just like sitting there going, um, okay, so I'm just going to have to use whatever I can find and just eyeball it, which is not necessarily the best thing to do. But... Um, You know, you just have to if you can't really find the images. I'm sure if I were to go through some of his movies, I would probably find what I'd want. Um, but ain't nobody got time for that. But anyway, um, because I don't have a very good side profile, I decided um, I was going to start off with... If you go into the light box here, there are these head planes that you can start off with. And um, I basically just pulled one of these and used this to start start off with. And um, it worked a little bit better for me. So I, you know, just kind of pulled it in here, started sculpting, perspective mode. I started sculpting and, um, you know, this is as far as I am now. And it, yeah, I mean, the one half of his face kind of looks like him. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more close to him looking like actual Anthony Hopkins from the side because you're, you're starting to see uh, a little bit more it's looking more like him here I still have the eyes to work on because I think the I've pulled the inside corners of the eyes in too much so I'm going to pull them out a little bit and start working on them uh, I'm going to go back to talking a little bit about pulling up references and using references uh, one of the things that's very interesting to note is that when you're looking at references, things like lighting can really change a face, right? So look how different the black and white looks to everything else. Like it really makes them look a lot harder here. You see a lot more of the features. And in this one that I'm using, the light at the front is very diffused so it's taking out a lot of the super fine details on on his face and this is something you have to kind of take into consideration when you're um, using your reference images the other thing that you have to take into consideration is all of these images are probably taken with different lenses with different you know focal lengths and the focal length of a camera can do a lot to change the shape of a face um, there is a GIF 
that's really popular. Oh, let me see if I can find it. So here is this GIF here. Uh, let me bring it over here. This shows you how this is the same person, but varying focal lengths on the camera can change the way the face is perceived. And when you're looking for reference images on from the internet, this is something that can mess up how your sculpt turns out. So it's a little bit like you it's a mix between having to use the references and also eyeballing. So it's hard to tell from here which focal lengths are being used on the camera. I feel like this one has a local uh, a lower focal length and this one's probably got a higher one because his face looks a little flatter here and you can see here his nose is like there's a little bit more projection with the nose coming towards the camera. Uh, this looks like it's got a much higher focal length, like, you know, a hundred millimeter lens versus this one, which is probably like uh, 50 or 30 thereabout. So that's something to take into consideration. Now I've waffled on quite a bit and I should just get around to actually sculpting.